Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? Fine. Thanks. Great, great, great. Um, and where are you from? Thailand. Excellent, excellent. Oh, that's right. I recognize you from um, what was that yesterday? So um, let's see. Is your real name Lovely Kitty? Uh, uh, Kit. K I T Kit. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. It's not King. K I C K. It's not King. <laughs> Okay. Very nice, very nice. Okay. Um, and so, Same. Thailand. What part of Thailand are you from? Bangkok. Bangkok. Yeah. Excellent. I've never been, but I would like to go. I really mm -hmm. would. I um. The problem is, is that the the flights are so expensive. You know. <laughs> I almost um. I think it'd be fun to just sneak on like a ship that sails that's like delivering cargo or something and just get a free ride to Thailand. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. possible this day and age, but I would like to. Mm -hmm. okay. um, have so you never you do? Go ahead. Uh, have you never come to Thailand? I never have, but mm -hmm. um, I I would like to. Uh, it's on mm -hmm. my my list of things that I would like to do. Mm -hmm. I've um I had a friend who taught English in Thailand, and he was there for about six months, and he was able to make enough money just to you know pay for housing, pay for food, and that's what I would like to do. So this is you know this teaching English over the internet is good practice, um, but um, and I also teach English in person. Um, people in Buenos Aires, but um, yeah, I would like to, to make a move to that, you know, classroom setting and where I can actually live in Thailand for a little bit. And what do you do? Do you study? Do you, um, do you work? Uh, I'm working. Fantastic, fantastic. And what do you do to work? Um, I'm, I'm an order in a written business. What are you? Do do business. I do, do my business. Uh, yes. And what type of business? Um, uh, right, um, apartment. I do apartment for rent. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Um, so you find part apartments that yeah, that are yeah. empty. So okay, wow, excellent, um, very cool. Let me um, let me welcome. Let's see, Victor. Hello, Victor. Victor, can you hear me? Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, the teacher that in Corey go. Uh, come to teach uh, many people. So Can you hear me now? They are a warranty. And they? And you like a volunteer? Volunteer. And you? Um, oh, mm. oh no no we we are paid. We are paid um fourteen dollars an hour. Oh. So. So it's um it isn't volunteer, but this is my um this is my job because mm -hmm. I have um you know basically just needed um you know I was looking for a job and I already had a job teaching um, English in person, but this is you know very convenient. This is my room. <laughs> I'll show you my room. <laughs> it's very convenient. I don't have to go anywhere. Um, but, mm -hmm. Can you hear me now, Christian? Oh, yes, I can. I can hear you. Great. Um, Kit, were you saying something? Uh, I, I think uh, this curry code uh, is very best for for uh, foreigner to would like to input 
righteous. Mm. It's very I think so too. Yeah, mm. it's really it's amazing. I love how, um, you know, instantaneously we can mm. all be talking. You know, basically, mm -hmm. you in Thailand and Victor. Where are you from? Brazil. You're from Brazil. I'm in Argentina. I think this is awesome. This is like such a cool uh, way to connect everyone and um, I don't know to share each other's you know English skills and even accents. It's good to to learn other people's culture. For example, my favorite class to teach is um, is speaking skills and listening skills because all we do is talk back and forth um, and. I really like to play this one game that looks like an exercise, you know, where basically I'll ask Kit, I'll say, Kit, um, any question, what is your favorite type of food? And then you'll answer me, and then you'll ask the next person a question. And so just doing that, you know, it's such a, an interesting, you get to learn about people's cultures and mm -hmm. about the different things going on in each country and um, just get an idea, you know, for example, like, um, you get an idea that in Brazil they like tattoos, but in Vietnam they don't like tattoos. Like I didn't know that until my last class where we had a discussion about that, um, and it was just someone from Brazil and in Vietnam talking. Anyways, I think it's uh, it's outstanding. But um, but let me ask Victor, what do you do? Are you a student? Are you a um, uh, I'm a student. I'm in law school. Oh wow! Yeah. Cool. What um what type of law do you think you want to do? Uh, I really don't know. I study everything a little. Okay. So. Do you think Do you think you'd want to be like in a court, or do you think you want to be like doing more stuff behind the scenes, like with writing and and working with companies? No, no, I'm studying to be a judge. Oh, to be judge, wow. Judge, awesome. yeah. That's great. Um, so my, I um, need know everything a little. <laughs> yeah, definitely true. <laughs> um, what part of Brazil are you in? Uh, I don't know how to say that in English. Northeast. How to oh, say that. Northeast, perfect. Um, I have a friend from Petrolina, which I think is in the north east as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's great. That's great. Um, mm -hmm. Awesome. So, um, why are you taking uh, the business class? Is there a particular reason? Um, I need for my master degree. Ah, okay. I need in an, another language. Cool. So the English is uh, is I think <laughs> to learn than French. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's up? Uh I, I would have thought the opposite. I would have thought that French and Portuguese are, are more similar than, you know, Portuguese and English. No, 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 no. <laughs> really? Don't <Wow>. think that. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because um, Portuguese and Spanish are similar. Like, I, I almost feel like I can understand um, a lot of what's said in Portuguese just by knowing Spanish. And I also feel that way with French. Before I learned Spanish, when I would watch French, I'd be completely, completely lost. I did not understand anything. But now, learning Spanish, I can especially, for example, I saw a movie that was originally in French, uh, and it had Spanish subtitles. And there were a lot of similarities, and I could understand a lot was, was said in yeah. French. But so, just with subtitles. Without yeah, her, <laughs> you will be lost. Yeah, definitely true. Definitely true. <laughs> so, do you know um, do you know any other languages or or Portuguese and English are here too? 
I just know Portuguese and English. And English just a little bit. <laughs> good. No, your English is great. Your English is very good. Um, yeah. Great. Well, let's see. I, I found um, an article that I'm going to share with you guys. Okay. Um, and it is about um, business writing. And I'm going to post this to the chat. This is business writing, and um, there are. I think we should just read this together, and then maybe we can just, you know, talk about some of the. Um, this is for if you're writing anything in business, or if you're if you have a company, and you want to, you know, write about it, or you know, ask for money from investors. These are twelve tips to keep in mind. Um, and then I also found another article. Well, actually, I haven't found an article yet. I've been looking through a bunch of articles that um, that deal with entrepreneurship, which I'm personally interested in. Um, entrepreneurship is just kind of like um, if you want to start your own business. If you realize that there's you know a shortage of um, you know of bicycle companies and everybody wants to ride a bike but they can't ride a bike, and you you know you form like a bicycle shop, then you're kind of an entrepreneur. You're just appealing to a need. I don't know. That's interesting to me is just um, is that idea of entrepreneurship, of, of starting your own business. So, um, but for now, let's go to this one article, and it's called 12 Tips for Better Business Writing. And then um, we can kind of examine this, read it together, and um, try and get some business tips. I'll also screen share. Is it is it better to screen share or is it better to um to just give you the link? Link, I think the link. Okay, and Kit, what do you think? Kit, are you there? Oh, I am here. Okay. Uh, okay. Is it I'm better here. to use the link or is it better if I screen share the document? Um, okay. okay. <laughs> do you want me to screen share the article, or do you want to just um, use the link and go yourself? Uh, I don't understand. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Um, is it is it easier for for you to see me? In a video, or is it easier for me to put up the article right here so we can look at it together? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll put up this article. Um, let's see. And hello, I see Nick just joined us. Basically, uh, hello. We are going to look at this article. It's about business writing tips. Um, so go ahead and go to that. <clears throat> I'm going to screen share. Screen share business right tips. Here we go. Very good. All right. Here we go. Twelve tips for better business right. Mm, yeah. Great. Um, and I also have um, my chat. Open. Hello, Nick. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, let's see. So, let's just go ahead and start. Um, let's take turns reading this. Victor, would you go ahead and start um, start reading this uh, this article? Yeah. Let me see. 12 Tips for Better Business Writing Today's business world is almost entirely information driven. Whether you run a small business or occupy a small corner of the Orchard, how to say that? Orchard chart? 
The um, so org is short for organization, and chart. I don't know what a chart is. Um, um, I think it's just this is a list of all the organizations. Like a chart is kind of like a a list of all the organizations. I will so the read it chart. from your screen. It's <laughs> okay. <more easy. laughs> all right. Org chart at a massive multinational corporation. Change chains are the that the book of your job consists of a communication with others, most often in writing. Of course, there's email and the traditional business letter, but most business people are also called on to write presentations, memos, proposals, business requirements, training material, materials, promotion, hope, grant proposals, and a wide range of other documents. Great. So that is just saying that there's a lot of things that you need writing skills for. Everything here, there's the traditional business letter, which requires writing skills, but also there's presentations in front of other people, memos, which are just you know notes between um, co-workers that say, hey, we have a meeting today, or um, any other type of information between co-workers. Propose, which means um, if you're going to propose an idea, you write a proposal. Say, hey, I have this great idea, and this is why everybody in the company or all the investors should, should approve this. Um, Let's see, and just like other skills that you need writing for. So that's why we're reading this article, because business writing is very important. Okay, um, great. Thank you, Victor. Let's go on to um, to Kit. Do you mind reading okay. the next paragraph? Okay. Here, uh, here, there are most business people have written experience with writing. Why does this business degrees probably did a bit of writing in school? It's Larry straight in business program and learning to lie well in hurry. The driving force behind most people decide to go to business school. Thus without a university background might have never been pushed to lie at all, at least since Public school. Great, thank you, Kit. Basically, um, this is saying that um, a lot of business people they don't have the writing skills. So, if you're a business person and you do have writing skills, you'll do better in a lot of um, in a lot of cases because your writing is more clear than a lot of the people involved in business. Let me put it this way: the a lot of times, the students who are good at writing, the students who write well, go on to do things like, you know, be an author or work for a um, work for a magazine, or maybe go into a an uh, an NGO or a nonprofit job. Those kids do that, whereas the people who are good at math and stuff like that. Maybe they are the ones that go into business, and for that reason, the people who are in business maybe, at least according to this article, do not have the writing skills. Um, so all you need to do is get a little bit of writing skills if you're in business, and you'll be ahead of the game. Yeah. Terrific. Um, great. Let's um, let's see. Great. Let's just go back to uh, to Victor. Okay. To read the next um, the next paragraph. Okay. If, oh, wait a, <laughs> wait a sec, the screen shaking. Uh, oh. No. If you run off the main people in business for warm writing has b never been a major concern, you should know that a lack of writing skills is a greater and greater handicap with every passing year. Spending some time to improve your writing can result in a market improvement in your higher ability 
and promotional prospect. There's no substitute for practice, but here are a few pointers to put you on the right track. But here, here are a few pointers to put you on the right track. Exactly. A pointer is a tip. A pointer is um, kind of like a here's a um, you know here's a tip. Uh, here's something that you can do better. Here's an idea that will help you. Yeah. Um, that's what a pointer is. Let, let's just go over whom. That's this word up top, Pega. Whom is kind of like who. Um, so it's pronounced whom. It's um, the difference is in one case it's the the subject. For example, who is the person? That's who is the subject, or um, to whom do I give it to? So I'm the subject, and to whom is the um, is the basically the indirect object. Um, but that's kind of a grammar point. But just pronounce that whom. Okay. Great. Um, exactly. Let's um, also higher ability. That it's let's break it down. The first word is higher, and that means um, you know if you can be hired. Um, someone, if someone hires you, that means someone's going to you're going to be an employee. And ability, that just means your ability to be hired. So if you have uh, good writing skills, you will boost your hire ability. Great. Well, um, I'll read the I'll read the next paragraph. This is the first of twelve pointers. One, less is more. In business writing, as in virtually every other kind of writing. Concision matters. That means um, being concise, which means um, getting right to the point using few words. So that's what this paragraph is about. Mm -hmm. Ironically, as written information becomes more and more important to the smooth functioning of businesses, people are less and less willing to read. Increasingly, magazines and other outlets that used to run 2,000 word features are cutting back to 500 word sketches. In other words, or, pardon, use words sparingly. Cut out the florid prose and avoid long, meandering sentences. As Zorro taught his son, get in, make your Z, and get out. Get straight to the point, say what you want to say, and be done with it. So, this is interesting. It's just when you're writing in business, when you um, doing business writing, you want to s be very short with what you want to say. Um, a lot of business people don't have time to read a lot of stuff, so just say what you want to say. And, um, and that's it. I'm going to mute super because her audio is turn off her television man uh, <laughs> yeah I'm not sure who the really oh <laughs> I think it doesn't give up. It doesn't give up. I don't know why it isn't working. Um, all right, I'm going to send her a message. So the turning off your TV. Um, I'll give her a minute, and then I'm going to block her. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well... <laughs> Uh, very good. No problem. <laughs> no problem. We were we were worried for a second though. Um, 
Great. Then, Super Pete, I'll just tell you what we're doing. We're reading this article. Um, oh, she's gone. Never mind. <laughs> Great. Well, I read the first paragraph. Less is more. Let's go on to avoid jargon. And this will be Kit again. Would you please read number two? Avoid jargon. Uh, before, let me ask Kit, you something. Uh, what is jargon? Sure. Okay, good question. Jargon is. Jargon. When someone says jargon, it means the um, it's language that's very specific to the industry. For example, if you're talking about photography, or if you're talking with your friend who's a photographer, and and they start talking about you know megapixels and resolution and you know JPEG versus RAW and all this language that you just don't know, you're like, listen. I want to know about the quality. Tell me how clear the picture is. And then they say, well, it has 10,000 megapixels and the resolution is, you know, 300 pixels an inch or whatever. And they're just talking about all these things that are very, very confusing. That's jargon. Um, so anything specific, for example, a mechanic who is, um, who you say, what's the gas mileage? And he starts talking about, like the all the specific parts of the engine, like I don't know the radiator and the interactions with the with the um, okay, I got alternator, it. that type of thing. Um, so when you avoid jargon, that means you just talk about you're talking very clear terms that anyone can can understand. Okay. Um, great. So Kit, are you with us? Kit, are you there? Hmm. All right. Nick, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Okay, great. Um, would you mind reading the uh, paragraph number two? Uh, okay. Avoid jargon. Okay. Uh, everyone in business has business lighting. Or that blue sky, solutionian link, and those stagey core synergy that ultimately mean nothing, brainstorming and opportunity to work together are more mean meaningful without sounding ridiculous. Why sometimes jargon is available in the business requirement? document or technical specification. For example, try using plan planner ranges. Even for people in the same field as you, jargon is of, often in affection. The eyes slide, slide past it without really catching the meaning. There's a reason that jargon is so often used when the writer wants to not say anything. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so this is saying that when you're writing in business, you will want to use words that are easily understandable. And say you're talking about computers, you'll talk about how fast, you know, the, the fast downloading speed as opposed to that it has an Intel Pentium 3 processor. So that's the difference. You just want to say that um, it has an HD screen instead of like 1040 PI or whatever the, whatever the um, way to measure the screen resolution is. That's a good tip. It's just to Speak in a language that everyone can understand. Speak very clearly um, when you're writing, and um, don't get too technical. Is a good way to say it. Great. Yeah. Any questions about? Um, if you guys have any questions, any words you don't understand, feel free to type it right in the chat box, mm -hmm. and then I'll go ahead and answer that. That's a good way to ask a question. Um, 
Mm. Feel free to do that. How um, for now, do I pronounce pronounce field? <clears throat> um, let's see. I'm looking. Oh, the same field. For people in the same field. See, you're saying it. Uh, you're saying it right. Field. It's um. So a field is is either like a corn field or like a a field of sugar cane. That's a field. It's just a big open space that has you know plants. Um, yeah, that... I know what it is. Oh, I... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. And then, um, yeah, exactly. So in this case, it's more of a you know just your other people in your same uh, job. But it's saying that even for people in your same field, jargon is inefficient, which is an interesting idea. You would think that people in your same field would um, would understand the jargon. Okay. <clears throat> Very good. Um, terrific. Well, uh, Kit, are you with us? I don't know if Kit can't hear us or what, but um, for now, I guess I will read number three. <clears throat> Write once, check twice. <laughs> um, so that's just saying, you know, make sure you check your work. Proofread immediately after you write, and then again hours, or better yet, days later. Nothing is more embarrassing than a stupid typo in an otherwise fine document. It, it's hardly fair. Typos happen, but people judge you for those mistakes anyways, and harshly. Except in the direct, in the direct emergency. Always give yourself time to set your writing aside and come back to it later. The brain is tricky and will ignore errors that it's just made. Some time working on something else will give you the attachment you need to catch those errors before anyone else reads them. I find this tip very helpful. Um, I find that when I write, um, I make mistakes, but when I read them, I don't see them. It's like um, it's like I'm just I know what I'm trying to say. Like if I if I write the sentence, yesterday I went to the baseball game, but I forgot a letter or something, or maybe I forgot a whole word. Yeah, maybe I forgot the word the, and I really wrote yesterday I went to baseball game, and I read that sentence. I might it it'll just look like yesterday I went to the baseball game. It'll look completely fine to me, but. If you if you give yourself a few hours and you kind of forget what you wrote, then when you read it, it's um, you know it's a lot easier to catch your mistakes. You'll just, you'll see them as opposed to when you already know what you said. When you just write something, you know what you said, and so when you read it, you're not even almost you're not even really reading what you wrote. You're just seeing what you know you already wrote, and there's a difference. Um, when you're in your ability to, to catch typos, which means to see typos. <clears throat> Very good. Um, uh, it looks like we're back to Victor. Would you please read number four? Okay. Four. Yep. Right once. Oh, wait. Don't no, move. You're right. <laughs> you're right. Please. Oh, sure. <laughs> Write once, check twice. I know I just said I just said this, but I mean something else here. In addition to catching typos and other er errors, putting some time between writing and re reading, your work can help you catch errors of tone that might otherwise escape escape you and cause trouble for instance when you're for instance when you're upset or angry we often write things we don't actually want anyone else to read make sure you your work says what you want it to say how you want it how you want it to say it before letting it reach its audience that's a great tip. Um, it's very similar to number three, but it has to do more with tone. It, do you know what tone means? To what is tone? 
Tone is an interesting word. What it means is kind of, <clears throat> it's kind of a, um, it's kind of the general feeling you get when you read something. For example, if someone just, um, if I just, if I was going to go to lunch with my friend, <clears throat> And then I forgot. And my friend went to lunch and waited and waited and I didn't and I didn't meet her there. She's gonna send me an email and say, Hi, I'm here still and I uh, I don't know where you are and maybe you got stuck in traffic, but anyways, I'm still waiting. Um so let me know when you get here. That has an angry tone, that has a frustrated tone, and that has, um, it's kind of a, when I read that I'm going to say, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. Um, so that, when you're writing in business, you don't want to have an angry tone. Um, even if, for example, you're writing to uh, maybe your boss, and you know if something happens and you're a little upset and you write you might you might you might write with an angry tone um, and it might seem normal to you because you're kind of in a bad mood but what sh you should do is maybe wait a couple hours and reread it and say oh my gosh this sounds like I'm upset I should reword this to say what I want to say but not have the angry tone so for example like, if your boss won't let you go on vacation, um, even though it's your, you know, your brother's wedding, um, you initially you would write like something that had an angry tone, like um, I've been here every single day, um, I, I get here early. Why won't you let me go on vacation? That has an angry tone. Maybe, maybe when you come back in a couple hours, you will say, "Oh my gosh, this is too angry." I need to reword this to say, um, I would really like to go on vacation because it's such a special occasion and I'm willing to not um, miss another day for the next three months or something like that. Um, to say what you want to say but without the angry tone. Um, good tip. Very good. Does anyone have any questions about that? Mm, no, I just want to know what the you oh sorry wait a sec yeah what is this the mm. if we have no skill to write how how to correct oh I see what you mean. Um, so if you if you're not a good writer, how how can you correct your writing? Is that your question? Yes. Well, that's a good question, and I, all I can do is answer it um, from my experience learning Spanish. When um, when I learned Spanish, and I'm still learning, but um, especially at the beginning, when I would write something. Um, it, I'm a very, I would be a very poor writer, but I could just figure out what I was writing. But then, when I went back, I might catch some stupid errors. For example, um, I used the wrong word here, or um, things just appear more, a little bit better. So if you can write even a little bit. Um, and you kind of struggle through it. It takes you a long time to write, you know, a few sentences. Just wait a little bit, come back, and you might you might even catch a mistake that you made and that you didn't even realize. Um, so even if you have a little bit of writing skills, this this tip I think is is uh, is pertinent. Mm. Um, Victor, oh. did you have a question? Yeah, how do I pro pronounce? How do I pronounce pronounce? 
<laughs> you pronounced it perfectly. <laughs> oh yeah. How do I pronounce detachment? That's it. Detachment. Okay. Detachment. Yep. Detachment. And um, let's see. And so detachment, if if you don't know what that means, it just means you have a little distance. You have it's the idea that I was talking about where when you write something and you know what you wrote. When you when you leave, you gain a little detachment, and um, all that means is that you're detached and you forget about what um, what you wrote. That's a good word to know. Good, good. Um, let's see. Um, Nick, would you please read number five? Uh, are you outside? Me, no. No, kitty. Oh, okay. There's some noise coming from. Yeah, I hear that as well. Um, him. Let me text him. Kit, are you there? Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. Um, okay, great. It sounds it sounds like there's a um like a fan or some wind on your microphone. Is that the case? Uh huh. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, but we can also hear a um some other noise. It might be the wind, or it might um, be. Oh. Okay. Okay. I, I'm sorry. I will That's close. okay. That's okay. If you can um. Uh, fix that, that would be great. But if not, it isn't too bad, so don't worry. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That sounds great. Um, would you read number five, please? Okay. Uh, number five, pay spiritual attention to names, title, and gender. Okay, that is one thing more emb embarrassing that a tribal calling Mr. Smith, Mrs. Smith consist, consistently to all document. If you are not positive about the spelling of someone's name, their job title, and what it means, or their gender, either a check with someone who does know by their assistant, or b. In the case of gender, use gender natural ranges. They and they are rapidly becoming perfectly acceptable gender neutral singular pronouns. Despite where what you what your gamma teacher and the cell writers gamma Nazi down the home might say. Great, thank you. Um, terrific. Are there any um, any words or anything that you guys are unsure about in this paragraph? What? Can you repeat that? Sure. Are there any words that you are unfamiliar with here? Mm, no. Okay. Any words? that we aren't familiar? That's right. Are there any words that you don't know? Yeah, no. Okay. How about you, Kit? Did, um, did you have any questions? No um, question. <laughs> okay, great, great. Let's go on to, uh, to number six then. Wait, oh, let me just review number five. So, yeah, that's just saying that make sure you, you use the right, um, the right title, the right names, or the right spelling of someone's name. It's a, um, it's a good business tip that, this is my opinion. In business, a lot of it is, is subjective. 
What I mean by that is if you like the person, um, you're more likely to, to come to an agreement as far as price and things like that. Um, so that is why you really want someone to like you if you're dealing with business. And to get someone to like you, it's better to spell their name correctly and that type of thing. That's a good tip. <clears throat> Great. Um, I will I scroll down to now. numbers. Um, oh, sure. What it means, despite what your grandma teacher and the self-righteous grandma Nazi, Nazi down the hall might say. Okay, that is a good question. <laughs> this is um, a very. This is an informal um, piece. This is a very informal list of of tips. And lifehack.org is the website. It has a bunch of tips, um, but it's not very formally written. So this last line is kind of um, snarky, uh, kind of sarcastic, kind of um, you know, an attempt at humor here. And so. Let's see. How can I describe this? Basically, uh, I think I got it. So yeah, it is Grimmen as it down the whole might say. So uh, it's a. It might be an American expression here, an expression from the United States, that if someone is a grammar Nazi, um, so a Nazi is. You know, referring to the, um, the, you know, the yeah, the political party in Germany during the 1930s, 40s, um, and yeah. so they have a connotation of being very strict, um, and you know, uh, a, a severe focus on rules. So a grammar Nazi is someone who is very strict about. Um, using the right grammar, and so that applies here um, to your grammar teacher and the self-righteous grammar Nazi. A, a, if you're self-righteous, you think that you're the best. So a self-righteous grammar Nazi is someone who is very proud of his or herself for um, for knowing grammar and is very willing to tell you when you use grammar incorrectly. I'm sure we all know someone like that. Um, but um, what this sentence is saying, it's very, it's technically proper to say, um, to use either he, if you're talking, or his, or his or her. So for example, it's his car or his or her is another phrase to say. Um, in other words, do you know how they and their is referring to multiple people? Mm, yeah. um, if you say their car, it means it's the car that is owned by multiple people, maybe two or three people. Um, but, and so there's, this is a, this is a, a dissonance if you're saying um, some like if the sentence is singular, but you use there. For example, let me let me think about this and I'll type it in. Hmm. Each person. Okay. Each person needs to check their mailbox. Box it needs to check the mailbox. So this is a sentence that is technically incorrect because each person is singular. And there is plural. Do you see that? Yeah. So that is according to grammar Nazis and gr uh, grammar teachers, this is incorrect. What is, what is preferred by people who um, follow grammar rules strictly is this. Each person 
needs to check his or her mailbox. And his or her is singular, technically. And it's it's used in that phrase. It isn't um, it can you can also say check each person needs to check his mailbox his mailbox because technically his is um, traditionally used as the um, as the default singular um, and what I mean by that if you are talking about you know multiple if you're talking about some random person it it might be a man it might be a woman you use his and um, I think the same in Portuguese, but don't you default to the feminine in Portuguese? If you're talking about someone, you always talk about like her. It's like you use the feminine. Well, the person needs to check his. No, no. I learned something about Portuguese. I can't remember, but uh, something about. Anyways, I'm off topic now. But um, what I what I'm trying right. to say, is you in Portuguese you use the male, uh, male. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh -huh. Yeah, like oh. his and her. Soon. Like uh. that. Okay. So you use uh, seu or his. Ah, uh, excellent. Okay, then that's the same. But but something. Um, I guess I have one more comment here, and this is why. Um, this is why his isn't completely acceptable. It's because there are. Um, you know, with the with the gender equality movements. That have kind of, um, it's kind of, it's kind of a mistake. It's kind of, um, it's almost insulting to use his in um, in English because it's called. Uh, it's referred to the sexism of language, and so that's why you don't just say his. Notebook. If you're talking about, um, for example, each person person needs to check his mailbox. So mailbox. You would say his or her. Um, each person needs to check his or her mailbox. But what this article is saying is that each person needs to check their mailbox. This is saying that this is correct in the business world. Each person needs to check their mailbox. Even though it isn't technically uh, correct, it's acceptable. <clears throat> That's what number five is saying. Okay. Um, yeah. Good work. Terrific, terrific. Um, great. So who whose turn is it to read number six? We only have a few minutes. So I tell you what, let's just, um, I'll just go through the rest of these uh, really quickly to see if there's anything um, necessary. Let's, let's talk about number seven because I think it's an interesting idea. Be professional, not necessarily formal. So what this is saying, this is saying that you should be respectful and professional, but not necessarily too formal. When I think of being formal, I think of you know those movies from England um, in the, I don't know, maybe the 1700s where to address the king, you would say, dearest sire, King of all that is good, and reigner of all—I don't know. You're just way too formal, you know. 
And so that isn't really effective for, uh, for business writing. I think what this is saying is you don't need to be exceedingly formal, but you should be professional. Um, just get to the point, say what you want to say, but don't feel that you need to be um, extremely respectful. Don't feel like you need to, to go above and beyond. Um, don't try and impress people with how formal you are, but just be professional, which means, um, you know, introduce yourself, state uh, who you are, state what you want to say, um, be sure to thank them with just a simple thank you for your time. You don't have to say, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for, for you know, everything you've ever done. You just need to, to be respectful, be uh, polite, be, um, be concise, as number one mentioned, um, and you should be fine. Okay. That's, what num that's what number seven is, um, is kind of hinting at. Um, and so that, that also means, um, I guess the, the other side of that is unprofessional. So off-color jokes, snarky gossip. Um, an off-color joke, let's talk about off-color joke. I, and that's this right here, off-color. That just means a joke that isn't, isn't really, it's kind of offensive in some regards. And the best example comes um, comes in number five. <laughs> this article is, is hypocritical in a sense because the self-righteous grammar Nazi, this is an off-color joke. Um, you don't really want to, to say anything about Nazis in your business, um, business dealings because many people, um, you know, are very offended by jokes about Nazis. Any joke that, that can be offensive, you wouldn't want to say. Um, and, you know, using, using the Nazis, a lot of people have a personal connection to the Nazis, um, and oftentimes it's a negative one. So that, that's what an off-color joke is. Um, it's a joke that kind of uses a, um, a topic that isn't very funny. Um, to to make a joke, you steer clear from that in your business writings. <clears throat> Very good. Um, well, you guys, we have we have reached the end of our class. Carlos, you're joining us at an inopportune time. Um, <laughs> this is the uh, the end of class. Um,